global government. Yeah, we're talking about the topic of your magazine. So it was about like totally new. different face now, totally different expression. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm light not. is on. Can no, I'm not. It? Come on. <laughs> Just to make it clear. <laughs> Come on. We're talking about the new forces in global governance. That's the topic, right? Who are you? I'm Habib. <laughs> I'm Abib, uh, I'm like a, one of several French guy in Shanghai, uh, here with some friends uh, who are actually in the same community than me, which is called Make Sense. It's like uh, I mean, a description of Make Sense, maybe? Make Sense is like uh, um, an open source worldwide movement. Um, and and like uh, and what we do is basically what we aim at doing is challenging people with social business. So basically, what we do is that we meet social entrepreneurs uh, all over the world, uh, and uh, we try to build communities with people randomly taken in the population, and uh, we gather them in creative workshops that we animate, uh, where they meet the social entrepreneur and try to solve. Uh, a business issue for this social entrepreneur and that's where you get to know more about the activities of this special kind of people trying to to change the world to say yeah so what can make make sense not all could what role could it play in global governance in global governance well um, could quit. to me yeah. what is interesting is that uh, I'm gonna tell about like some common facts that everybody knows. Just that with the upcoming of the internet in the last 20 years, and especially with the 2 2.0 generation, like like people understood this ability that they had to to gather uh, from different places all over the world, and without really knowing each other, just by sharing the same value around a, a common project. Um, they could just take actions in different fields that interested them and that's what Make Sense is all about. It's like after an hour, a bit more than half a year, we are 150 people in 20 to 25 countries. All volunteers? All volunteers, yeah, like we are mainly students and young workers. And basically, I think that if you take any member of Make Sense, except the founder, we must know only, like physically, we must have met only 10 or 15 percent of the rest of the community. But we feel like uh, we feel good with all the members, like when we share uh, on the internet uh, our projects, what we do in the city we live in, uh, about the social entrepreneurship issue. It's you now. That's what I have to say. Okay. Who are you? Who am I? Uh, that's a complicated question. <laughs> no, I'm Clemens. Uh, I live in Shanghai. Uh, no, I'm in China. So that's it. And uh, that's pretty much it. I don't know. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm writing uh, code and I'm writing uh, articles. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm doing some research for and uh, trying to understand uh, research about media, societies, and like China. As I'm in China, so like I try to understand how the yeah the, the media impact the society in a large way. But like more specially, no. I, we just start a research line about the idea like, of charism, which is like the way of people like who shares get rewarded by the sharing, by the fact of sharing. It's like we try to understand how sharing is an act who takes, who gives reward to people, who is not just like a gift, a free gift, but also like something you can be rewarded with. It. So like. And so we can we try to understand first like using the medias, especially social media, the internet, like how how it, how it takes like what it takes to is like when you share something it comes back to you. But like maybe in a different form, in a different way, not like not maybe maybe it's not what you was expecting, but it comes back to you in a way. So like I'm doing some research for that. So we try to understand first in the media and like maybe in a meta level, like trying to see 
through the world like media sphere, social networks, and things like that, and what we can like understand from that. So how is this concept of, of sharism? Yeah. I think it would be somehow be connected to global governance, can't it? Yes, yeah. of course. I think in, in a way. I, I know. This I, I mean, I have no I have no trade answer to global governance, but like maybe, a, hey, maybe it could. I mean, it's a way like. As I understand it, it's like the way to uh, for people to be connected, not by acts, by what they do, and not by, by, by people who connect them or like. So I think, yeah, the act of sharing, I mean, uh, habit of world makes sense, I think it's one of the examples. It's like, people are building a community, and they're building a community by the act that they're doing. So maybe they share something with someone, and so they get this connection. So it, it gets global really fast. As everybody knows, this rule of six people like who connects everyone to each other in the world. Six, six degrees of yeah, separation. Yeah, six degrees of separation, or something. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So like, so yeah. So I think with global government, that's the, the connection. It's like when you when you do an act. I mean, my interest is in the act of sharing, but every act, I think, it's like maybe in six degrees later, this very act has an influence on someone else or something else. So that's the idea. That's my own idea of global connection and global governance at the end. Because I, I think it's a very good idea because that's the way how you share values or how you work, you know, create values. So Yeah. Yeah and like and so yeah and put the value in this act. So because the value in the act of sharing actually like when when you share something it's not because we, we all know it's not only a gift. I mean, if, and every gift is like that, you know, is the, I mean, yeah, every gift is like that. You, you give something, but you get some rewards, even if it's not another gift, it's like some vision to give, or like another something. So, so the idea is like in sharing is like that. And so it has a value, and a political value maybe in the act of sharing. And so we come to global government. It's like, yeah, when you share, what you share with who, and what's your purpose, and like, if you define all, I mean, if you, so, yeah, pretty much that's the idea. Yeah. So, uh, if you look at China, I mean, you've been here for quite a while now, you do speak Chinese, what, what role could China play in global governance? Uh, we'll see. I, I think China, in a way, have like a lot of things to teach to the world, because like China is a society where it's uh, people focus. Here the people friends, I mean, uh, before the institution. The institution in China, like everybody, all the world is criticizing, even the Chinese, uh, including the Chinese, criticizing. Because like, yeah, the Chinese institution, the government, uh, the social welfare, it's, it's like, okay, we all know what it is, it's not that good, it's like, very bad, you know. But like, inside, so, to, but in the ruling of the Chinese society, it's like people to people. It's like, if I don't know you, I, I will not like, be with you, in a way. So he has like, somewhere we say, oh, this is the mafia ruling, you know, it's the way you rule the mafia. But it's the way you, it's another way to rule the society. And so it's this kind of connection. It's like, you know, people by, yeah, the way you connect it to them. And you will, I mean, you will kind of like, you, you accept the fact that like you know them. And, you know, it's like, I don't know. So, so I think in this way, it's like coming back to something really human. Because we have built all these institutions to protect, to, I mean, the rational institution to get part of, like, from the people, you know? It's like to protect the people from the people. Like, so you have, like, the government, uh, the blah, blah, the, I don't know, many things, like, the even the industry, you know? The, the, all is like, yeah, to protect the people from the people, to not have this direct connection. But China is a really basic way, I mean, it takes, it takes a relation one-to-one -to, -one to, to make something here. So this, in a way, I think it's really interesting. And it's uh, something like, for the Western culture, which is really forgotten. Because we have this project-oriented mind, we have this institution-oriented mind, and so we forgot the people. It's like, we, you can switch, you, we can think like, you can switch the people, you can change the guy. If the guy is not good, you can change it and take another guy. And everything, and every people sitting in China is like that. It's like, it's there are so many people, so you can switch them easily, like blah blah, because they are so many people. It's not, it's like, if the guy doesn't know the guy, you know the guy, you cannot do it. And like, and it works like that. And so, I think it's something that China can teach, not teach, but like, you know, you have some thing really interesting here, it's like back to the really, we call it grassroots, but it's a really people level. Yeah. So it's about like one to one yeah. when it starts. So that's it. Can I ask you also something? Yeah. Yeah? 
so what do you think for you as a young Chinese woman, what are the biggest challenges for you in your personal life, in your, in your, uh, in your business life? Or maybe it's the same, I don't know. I think a uh, big, big cha challenge. 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 Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, it's um, it's not my self. You know, you know yourself. Believe, believe yourself. Conf confident in China, a woman. I think. Yes. Many girls, you know, it's um, they are they are beautiful. They are, oh, they have uh, ability, but they uh, they don't know about this. Yes, maybe um, maybe it's it's come from family family's idea, man. No, give give them. Mm. Yes. For me, it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you. So can you just please repeat your name and who you are? Tell us. Me? Me? Yes, who you are. Uh, I'm Yuan. Uh, I come from a small city in China, Qingdao <laughs> Beer. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a fashion designer. I, I set up my studio in here and uh, now I for earn money I have to work for some uh, chic company you know, make shape clothes design so but this is not my theory um, but I don't have idea I, I need uh, I need a life life in Shanghai because um, I, I want to be successful. successful? <laughs> Sorry, my English. That's perfectly uh, fine. Don't ask about my Chinese. So, um, I have to do some work. But um, another way, I, another way, another way, another way uh, I, I, want, I want to be myself also. I don't want to lose myself. Lose, yeah. lose myself. So, you're saying you come from a little, a small city. Qingdao. Yeah. Qingdao, yes. How many inhabitants? How many? How many people live there? How many? Four? Five, five million. Five million. I don't know. I don't have idea. <laughs> small city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Small city. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello. Here we go. Larry, tell us your story. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing? Alright, uh, so I'm Larry. Uh, I'm currently... I just moved to uh, Shanghai, so a few weeks ago. Where are you from? I'm from Tahiti. Uh, so I'm French. Uh, I've been uh, in China since like less than six months. I was in Beijing before. Okay. Before that, in Singapore, in, uh, in the US. In France. Okay. So what brought you here to Shanghai? Uh, a lot of things. It's a lot of things. So it's a confluence of things. Uh, first, I have my, uh, I have some Chinese origins. My grandfather's come from China. So I always wanted to come to China to to experience living here, to uh, know more about the culture, the country, but also the language. Uh, I studied Chinese when I was uh, in uh, in high school, but for two years and I. That's no pain for what it is. I want yeah. to, to learn more uh, from that. And also, my my girlfriend was uh, sitting here, so I uh, took uh, the opportunity to come. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are for you the biggest the biggest challenges here in China? The, yeah. like, for me personally. For or? you personally. Yeah, I guess is yeah. Number one will be I guess the language, uh, the language because even if uh, you know even if you I grew up in a I guess my so my my grandparents were Chinese so I knew a little bit about the culture, uh, but the the, the the language is still a big a big challenge. 
much. And there's a lot of things I guess you realize when you're arriving in China that even myself, like from with my background, I was not aware of like chi China is a very big and diverse country. Uh, and a lot of things that you learn like every day. Mm. Even, even for, for so what are you learning? What are the things you're learning? Uh, like when you, from a from a Western point of view, uh, because I grew up mostly in a Western uh, world, you're not like uh, you don't realize that how much different is like North China than compared with South or East with West. Uh, we tend to, uh, to simplify things like oh Chinese eat rice or all things like that. But yesterday, like in the north, they would eat more noodles than rice. Uh, or just this is just an example, but among among a lot of. Uh, mm. uh, what do you think? What kind of role could China play in global governance? What do you think, from your point of view? Uh, so I'm not here uh, since a long time, like uh, Clément. But uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure he's right because uh, China is such a big country that uh, when you live in a village or even in cities, like smaller cities, you cannot, you cannot uh, assume or you cannot um, assume that the government will take care of you. So you need basically to survive and, and, and take care of like families and, and friends. And, and I think this, uh, this relationship with, with people is something that we, we might have, have lost in the, in the West over, over the, the past few uh, centuries. It's something that we, uh, I guess we will have to, uh, to learn again. Like, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of movement in the in the Western uh, countries like uh, uh, community consumptions or things like that, like buying uh, things, but in the, in, instead of owning everything myself, it's owned by a group by my neighborhood, for example. For example, a car. I don't if I don't need, like most of the time I won't use the car uh, a car every day, especially in big countries. So we could have a car owned by. Uh, a neighborhood or a building or just a floor and they just share it with, uh, with the, my neighbors and uh, in big cities like uh, New York or Paris you tend to not know uh, your neighbors anymore. That's, that's